Well, good evening, everyone. Hello. Bry is taking a moment to uh, re-log in due to an issue that cropped up while we were talking here. Yep. But uh, after the results of last week's session, we're going to see how you... Uh, you made contact with a couple of potential sources here in Cairo. Uh, neither one of them was particularly willing to talk to you so far. So we're going to have to see how you yeah. choose to deal with that situation. Why don't we go ahead and have you say hi to start tonight, uh, Joey. Hello, everyone. I am playing Connor Leon, the manic, horrible person that harassed multiple uh, simple merchants <clears throat> because I don't really understand how Egypt works. <laughs> you you really only harassed one of them. The other one kind of flipped out on his own. Yeah, he yeah. <laughs> I I did also technically insult him by doing the gesture of protection. Cute. That in probably front of his didn't face. help. <laughs> yeah, that didn't help at all. <laughs> and Terry. Oh. Hi. Play as James. Uh I am the medic the history guy. Uh Gentleman yeah, stalled, right? yeah, yeah, pretty much. And Bry. Hello, I'm Bry, and I am playing Bernadette Brandt, who is about to get real sick of her friend's crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be James. You ain't tired of James. I am thinking that we will pick up if you have like we're going to assume that Bertie was taking a nap or just taking a walk or something while everybody else was was busy all day. You can meet back up for supper <laughs> and relay exactly what happened last week. Um, I was babysitting Victor. That's that's reasonable. <laughs> He's not in good shape. We're, still. we're not leaving. We're, we're not leaving him or his son alone ever again. But, uh, you can catch up over dinner. Bri, I don't know if you watched last week. Is there anything you need caught up on, or do you feel you're pretty much up to speed? I feel like I'm fairly up to speed. Okay. Um... It seems important, they will mention to you that um, Faraj Najar kind of lost his cool at the mention of the Carlisle expedition. Uh, and what's his name? Uh, Roger uh, Warren Bezart, who was Roger Carlisle's actual contact in Egypt, seems to have completely lost his marbles. He is living in a small room behind a clothing shop uh, and has apparently arranged a deal with the owner of the clothing shop not to let anyone know that he lives there. Oh. <coughs> and, uh... You can let me know if you want to do anything else this evening, or if you want to wait for tomorrow. Uh, I believe that we wanted to look into the newspaper, and what was the other place, Terry? Uh, this newspaper, and... We did have another place, I just I can't think of it now. You want to go back to the museum at some point. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to the newspaper. This uh, uh, And uh, Connor is not going to tell Birdie that he was chased away with the scimitar. Just not going to talk about it. James probably would, but 
Con- Connor, we're not. No, no Con- we're not going to talk Connor, about it. I won't talk about it, but I'll say that uh, we're probably not going to want to show our faces there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Connor's not going to, like, give details, but he will say we are probably not welcomed on this street and this street. <laughs> what did you do? I'll, I'll just point to, to Connor and just say, you want more details? You go and interrogate this man. I um, I refuse to speak without a lawyer. <laughs> I will am I say. Gonna have to, am I going to have to withhold some drink for a little while? Okay, okay, okay. One, that is not fair. And two, <laughs> the, the long and short of it, one wants to kill me because I said the Carlisle expedition, and the other one is suspicious. And I overplayed my hand. <sighs> See, both of those are important pieces of information. <laughs> Speaking of which, Connor, you are free yeah. to decide whether you are still suspicious of the shopkeeper, or oh, if you've I'm... thought better of it since then. <laughs> Uh, it's not to the extent of me thinking he is straight up a cult member and I have to kill him later. More, that guy was hiding way too much to not be a shady guy. Like, okay. That's hmm. fair. He was hiding a whole person. And I got to talk to him for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, uh... It is probably too late to go to the uh, to the newspaper today, even if that was your choice. Uh, and the museum's kind of the same story. Mm-hmm. Uh, both shops are most likely closing up or closed, um, but if you wanted to try to... Uh, you have used less than legal means to gain entry to a place before. So if that <laughs> if you wanted to do that, that is still an option tonight. If you want to go when places are open, it's probably going to be tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Connor says, but I did get my hit myself on, uh, my hands on a couple of, uh, disguises. And he pulls up a bandana on his face. <laughs> it does look a little... Yes, they did purchase I've, some authentic local I clothing. Will, I yeah. will do a very loud... And you'll just hear James very loudly just sigh <laughs> as he just walks away. Is the authentic local clothing with big quotation marks around it here? <laughs> no, they, they bought... He also bought red bandanas. He was very insistent mm-hmm. on that. But yeah. they, mm-hmm. they did buy just some regular clothing that people on the street wear here. Okay. Which includes headgear. Now, in the city, it would be unusual to have it drawn across your face, well, it, but they have the headgear to, you know, cover your face in a sandstorm. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll also, um, <clears throat> we have a possible demon that we're dealing with, and um, Ooh, the that's one that cha- do. Uh, the, 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 the one that really doesn't like me because I brought up the Carlisle expedition. Uh, he, he's got the burnt face. So if we're on Potter Street and you see a man with the burnt face, don't bring up Carlisle. This is, this feels like extremely important information that maybe should have been stated first. What, what's had, this about a demon? And what does this have to do with a man with a burned face? Uh, there was a man that was uh, selling to the Carlisles. And, and then the expedition happened and we ended up having to uh, in, in, investigate we found out that their uh, humble stall was burnt down. 
the Connor is coming and going. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, his, his humble the, soul uh, was burnt. Locals down and... said that a demon, yeah, kind of a uh, like a fire elemental or something, came and just like burnt the whole place down. Well, all right then. Let's not stay anywhere flammable, I suppose. But if I remember correctly, that happened like, what, seven years ago? Five or six years ago, yeah. Hmm. Okay. You might be able to, like, if it's a if it's a legitimate event, then you might be able to look that up in the newspaper or go to the police precinct and look at ask them about old records. All right. I I'd say go let's go look at them records first. Uh Why do y'all always get up to so much weird stuff when I'm not around? Because I'm the one talking. <laughs> <laughs> She, she gets this weird look on her face for just a moment, like she's thinking about something, then shakes her head and uh, continues getting ready to go out. <laughs> All right, are you planning to go to the police station tonight? Was that your idea, or are you going to wait for tomorrow to do this? Well, is it open tonight? Uh, well, the police station is going to be open pretty much all the time. Uh, whether they're going to let you back in their records tonight, open question, probably depends on, you know, how good you are at talking, how nice they're feeling. <laughs> so, theoretically, Bernie could probably get in. Yeah, it's not out of the question that you could. Um, okay. As most places in the world the application of funds can you know smooth the wheels a bit true all right yeah let's go ahead and do that tonight then we can come all back right. have a nice dinner oh you you've been talking during dinner so you're you've already had a nice dinner but what about second tongue. dinner? <laughs> <laughs> you can have as many dinners as you want, I suppose. Uh, let's see. So, um... Most places in the city, you're not going to get very far without uh, first getting a hold of your of your guide and asking him for directions for the uh for the police station i feel like you can probably ask people on the street and make your way there mm -hmm. okay yeah, just birdie being her friendly self mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Meanwhile, so... hyper murder Connor. <laughs> so, no problem. Half an hour to an hour later, you'll find your way to the uh, to the police station. Okay. Um. As you walk inside, uh, I assume you can see on your screen, correct? Yep. I can't see anything. <laughs> Still got the WebGL problem? Yep. Firefox um, 
is telling me an update is needed. Okay. Well, there's there's nothing important on the screen. It's just like a, a police station. Uh, okay. So you go in, you'll find an officer at the desk who will look up and say, Hello, are you here to report a crime? Or what? how can I help you? Well, uh, I'm here more for a little bit of investigation. See, I'm, I'm just doing a few reports on strange events happening in the area and how local mythology tends to skew one's perception of said strange events. I heard about a fire that happened a few years ago and Well, frankly, the information that I've been getting from the people involved has been uh, interesting, to say the least. So I was wondering if maybe you had any records of that fire that I could look into. Well, we, we, might, have, we might have records, depending on if there was uh, any crime suspected. Are you a reporter? Of a sort. Uh, I have a friend who publishes books, and he asked me to do a little bit of research for him while uh, he is investigating other threads. Alright. Uh, can I ask who your friend is? Uh... I highly doubt you've heard of him. His name is uh, Jonathan Hammer. All right. Uh, let's call this. Hmm. I'm thinking. I think we want to make it a luck roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think. Probably... Oh, that reminds me. Mm -hmm. We were talking about uh, last week to remind you about. Oh, luck refresh. Or luck. Yeah. yeah. Good Ooh. point. <laughs> so, I will make that possible. You should be able to roll your luck now. Yo! Good lord. I got some Connor luck there. <laughs> Don't say that now. <laughs> hey, I've got cheese over here. And dandelion <laughs> jelly. I'm good. Hey! And offering to the dice gods. You in there to make your roll, Connor? Oh, yes. Uh, where is my... Recover... Okay. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Means have luck to burn. I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna do. Same. A, I'm gonna do a weird thing here. Uh, we're okay. gonna call it a luck roll for him to have heard of Jonathan Hammer. We're gonna say if you have an extreme luck roll, that he has heard that Hammer is dead. Like he's a big enough fan mm. that he'll have seen that in the papers and remembered it. Okay. Uh, just a base luck roll. Uh, we're going to go with Birdie on this one, because she's the one okay. making the, doing the conversation. True. True. Alright. Fingers crossed. Hey. That's pretty much okay. perfect. Uh, Good enough. Yeah, so, uh... Let's say, oh, yes! Uh, that, uh, that magician guy who, uh... Who writes about cults. Well, I hope, I hope he's not going to say that we have any cults here in Cairo. Oh, that man can find a cult anywhere. I wouldn't take it too seriously. Okay, <laughs> I think at this point I'm going to call for a fast talk roll. Okay, <laughs> could, could could I lean it towards charm at all? <laughs> you are. First of all, <laughs> you're sort of investigating for Hammer, so that that's not fast talk, really. You're not investigating for a book, and you definitely don't think that there aren't cults here. 
<laughs> you have all that luck to burn if you need to. <laughs> I'm gonna need to. <laughs> I I do not have very good fast talk. Well, I don't think anyone does. Man, lying is always the first thing I put points into. Oh, hey, that's, that is low that, enough that I could I should spend that luck is cheap on that. Enough. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think at this point he's going to say, um, uh, all right, um, you know, it would be, be really nice to be able to tell my family that my name is in a book. I would love to be able to do that for you. What, what name can I d take down for a, for a source? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and give you his name. He's and uh, not not his complete address, but you know the part of the city he lives in and his family and everything, just so that you have all the necessary information to really let people know it was just him. yeah, yeah, just some <laughs> basics about this gentleman. Yeah, G give him a little footnote, and then um, when you get into a few of the details of the. Um, of the fire itself. He'll say, Yes, I remember that. Uh, there was, um... Some of the locals kept talking about how a demon came down out of the sky and burnt the shop, and... They were divided over whether it was the will of Allah or if he was, uh, if, uh, if... What was his name? N Najar, if he had offended Allah, and that's why the demon was allowed to strike him, but uh, honestly we've seen this sort of fire several times he had clearly forgotten to uh, to extinguish his oil lamp overnight Ah, oh, I see You can see in here we have the modern electric lighting, which is much safer Um uh, Oh, yes. Yeah, buildings that have electric wiring and electric lights are... They just don't burn down as often as the ones that have an actual fire inside for light. Remarkable, isn't it? It... yes. Uh, Technology does seem to march on. So, you've had quite a few fires of that nature in the city. Um... Yeah, the... People were superstitious about that one for some reason. You can't always predict why people are going to go to superstition for one or another. I think he must have been fairly unpopular already. Hmm. But yeah, we have do, we have fires a few times a year. Do Do you have any reports on those? Maybe Maybe I can dredge something up on uh, what the differences are in there to point out how mythology can be a little, uh, fickle. Um, Which, yeah. she's going to very carefully gauge how he reacts to that. If he grimaces at all, she's going to immediately apologize. Okay, that's a psychology role, then. Alright. Also not great, but... Hey, you only get better <laughs> by doing it. Yep. Ooh. I'm not gonna spend that luck. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna spend that luck. <laughs> yeah, so he'll tell you um to be honest, police reports on this sort of thing are pretty basic. Um unless hmm. we find reason to suspect that there is a crime, we pretty much write down here's the people who are in the area, fire was put out, or the building was burned down. Or the people affected, and then we file it. Do you, Do you mind if I, I take a couple of notes on some of these? Maybe I can ask folks who were there. Okay. Well, it is. We're going to assume eight, nine at night. Um, okay. There are very few other officers in the building, and the public isn't really coming in right now. 
Alright, so he'll say... Yeah, yeah, as long as we make it pretty quick, I think I can, uh, I can just say that I'm on my... I'll put up a sign saying I'm on my tea break and we can come back. Uh, oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. And she is absolutely going to slap a fairly large bill into his hand for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just that's... as thanks. <laughs> he uh, he is not going to outwardly acknowledge it, but he does become, like, he's been fairly helpful, but here he's going to take you right back to the records. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, are you here alone or are Connor and James with you? Yeah, I don't see why not. I assume we were. So are you going back to the records room with her? I'll assume that while uh, they were uh, talking, I'll I'll be basically just taking notes. Okay. Yeah, James, why don't you come with me? Kana, would you mind uh, hanging out outside and just getting a feel for the locals? Connor, uh, you know, uh, tips us out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as, as you're leaving, the, the cop will call up. Hey, if anybody's coming in here, just let me know, would you? Yes, sir. <laughs> and he'll take you back to a room that has um, a few filing cabinets in it. Um, not incredibly modern. Like, there are filing cabinets here, but they're pretty old. They, um... Egypt is pretty recently not in not a British protectorate anymore. This equipment is clearly left over from when it was a British protectorate. Mm. Um, in fact, if I'm remembering correctly, this no, it was sometime around 1918 when the British moved out. I think so. This and this would be 1919, 1920. Uh, he will help you narrow it down. Uh, we'll say... Let's see, yeah. So he can help you find the records, which are in March of 1919. And they do include a short investigation, because after the locals reported that, you know, a demon had burned the store to the ground... There was some suspicion that maybe they didn't, like the people around him, didn't like him much. And a demon's a good excuse for burning down a rival's shop. But there was it an is. investigation, and as far as they could determine... Oh, 1914, even better. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. scholar. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh... There was an investigation as thorough as they could make it. Uh, arson investigations are not good now, let alone in 1919. Yeah. But as best as they could make out, it, you know, it was a fire. Like, there was no indication that somebody had broken in from outside and set it. The store caught on fire and burned to the ground. It was a pretty, uh, pretty vicious fire. Um... The shopkeeper was inside when the fire began, uh, managed to get out, and was pretty severely burned on the left half of his body, uh, his face particularly. He spent some time in the hospital, but uh, the report does mention that he, he recovered. Mm -hmm. And there might be an indication in there that uh, the... Uh, the fact that he chose to move to another part of town to open up a new shop doesn't steer suspicion away from his neighbors having done it, but he seems to be better off in the new location anyway, so... Like, yeah. nobody's burned a shop no, down okay. again. Which, you know, is a pre pretty decent bar to set. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, we're just going to take down a few names, just take some cursory notes. 
Yep. Uh, mostly regarding that one fire, but Birdie's going to take a little bit of extra time to note down names of people who were involved in other fires <laughs> just to uh, help hold up her story a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, and looking at reports on other fires, there doesn't seem to be any sort of pattern that you're seeing. In fact, give me yeah. uh, give me a, uh, a library use roll. That's a good way to oh, good luck to do to adjust your research. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> one of you roll. No, I hope that. One of you yeah. roll it and you can decide who does it. Him. You rather me roll it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, the, have the bookish kid do yeah. it. He knows what he's doing. That's why I brought him back. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh. Yeah, you will find that the investigation is to, uh, into Najar's fire is unusual only in that it seems to have been investigated a little more thoroughly than they usually are. Mm. Apparently there was some suspicion, like some actual suspicion that neighbors had done it. Uh, but they couldn't find any actual evidence of that. And because Najar, uh, when spoken to in the hospital, did not want to talk about it at all, they weren't able to pursue the investigation much further. Okay. Other fires uh, in the neighborhood, well, not in that particular neighborhood, but just other fires in the city, pretty clearly people would remember, yeah, I left the, the oil lamp on overnight, I fell asleep without meaning to, things like that. Or the kids spilled it over or something. Okay. Well, I think that is more than enough, wouldn't you say, James? Yeah, I think we got what we need. All right. Thank you, Miss. Uh, well, one more time, my name is spelled, and he'll spell it out to you again. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll well, thank make sure you I write so down terribly well. much. I will be sure to send a copy as soon as we are able to, all right? Oh, that would be wonderful. My, uh, my father will be very proud to know that I was, that I've been mentioned in the book. I, I will be sure to have that sent out. Thank you so much for your help again. <laughs> And you can head out into the evening. All right. Uh, Connor, why don't you go ahead and make a spot hidden roll for the time that you're standing outside? Sure thing. Spot hidden. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not gonna like shoot you or something. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was like, yeah, yeah, like, whatever I rolled that I was like, yeah, that, 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 that seems about right. Uh... So, um, it'll be sometime later, Birdie and James will come back out of the police station. And you're free to move on to whatever else you want to do. Most likely, unless you want to break in somewhere, most likely you're going to be going back, going to sleep for the night. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to go back to... Bed. We're not going to immediately go to crime. <laughs> Birdie's had a, enough of immediately going on the run. Oh, yeah. Uh, fine. It is too hot out to be hiding in some dark, cloistered little place. <laughs> We are going to relax. We are not going to draw any suspicion to ourselves. <laughs> and we are going to be thorough in this investigation, all right? Yes, ma'am. I promise we'll uh, we'll blow something up later. <laughs> you heard her. She promised. Really <laughs> blinding. <laughs> Um, you'll have taken a suite of rooms. Yeah. 
Uh, most likely there's nothing to really do overnight right now. But just, we can assume that you get a good night's rest. And let me know what you want to do in the morning. Well, what's your guys' plan? Well, I can't exactly take either of you with me to go talk to this gentleman. I mean, you could. You could take me. <laughs> I'll just have a uh, little headgear on. I'd rather not risk it, if I'm being completely honest. Well, I didn't piss him off. <laughs> Is is he aware that both of you are working together? He was pretty fixated on okay. Connor. Okay. Well, say, I don't think I, I didn't get to speak really, so I don't think he even noticed you. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. All right. <sighs> All right, Connor, I'm going to ask you to talk to people. Ah. Uh, and what uh what are we trying to get from these people? Nothing much. Th this is just to help hold up our story a little bit. And I'm going to give him, like, three of the names that we wrote down from completely random fires. <laughs> <laughs> and the neighborhoods that they're in. If you would be so kind as to talk to these folks. Unless you want to stay here and read or something. We've all been doing an awful lot of reading lately. You hear him mutter something about rather being chased by another scimitar. <laughs> it is also feasible for Connor to just, like, stand down the street from you. Fair. <laughs> you know, just in uh, case but things get busy tough. work. <laughs> yeah, that honestly seems like a better plan. Just wait down the road and make sure that nobody comes in after us. Not like we're alone with the man, but... You know suspicious types. Little does she know, he thinks everybody's suspicious anymore. <laughs> yep. Ugh... All right. James? Yep. Let's go talk to a man about a demon. All right. Uh, when you first introduce this plan to Ibi, uh, Ibi Musa, who is acting as your guide, he's going to say, are, are you certain you want to go back? He was not pleased with you yesterday. I'd you know like to at least give it a try. What not to say to him, at least, now. <laughs> I'd like to give it a try, because I'm a little bit better at talking to people than these two. Right. Yeah, um, I didn't even get a chance to talk. I, I would ask that you... Um, scout out a short escape route for us beforehand though <laughs> <laughs> just in case yes yes of course ma'am it is not my place to ask questions i'm here to be <laughs> to serve as your guide <laughs> uh. so the young man will once again lead you through the twisting streets <laughs> uh, is he regretting the job that he picked now uh, you're paying him well, right? We're trying. Yeah. So, 
so far, no. You're you're partic like you're particularly troublesome, Taurus. But you haven't actually started a fight yet. You guys just got ch chased off. That happens to like Taurus sometimes because Taurus aren't always polite. Definitely don't know local customs. Yep. Yeah. But uh, he will lead you back here. Uh, he will stand outside, and Connor, <laughs> he'll stay with you. And the two of you can look around, uh, watching for an, an easy escape route if necessary. All right. Uh, and once more. Do, 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 do. Yeah, uh, as James and Birdie enter the shop, uh, there is a man in, uh, well, in local clothing standing there. Uh, he is very careful to always have the left side of his body positioned away from you. He, he's uh, yeah. when he looks at you, he's looking kind of like this. Oh, that, like mm -hmm. just not quite side eye. If you didn't know what was going on, it would be a little off putting and possibly insulting. But he says, "Good evening. How can I? In how can I help you? I have." Many very important ancient artifacts here available for sale. Um, there are antiquities. There are items of with important spiritual power to help you with your needs. Or perhaps you just need lamps. Seems a little odd for someone selling such incredible artifacts to simply be selling lamps. Well, this is the Street of Potters, madam. I run a few business lines, but this is uh, this is where I make my home. Well, it's a very lovely home. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind to me. If you don't mind, I'd like to just look around for a couple minutes first to see if I can think of a few questions for you. Oh, yes, Depending of on course. what I'm really into. Uh, Thank I you. I will be happy to... Uh, I, I, are you familiar with, uh, with the, uh, the local pottery or with our artifacts? With the history of my wonderful country? Nowhere near as well as I should be. I would be delighted to hear what you have to say, actually. So, Just uh, trying to butter him up before no. trying to wheedle before into dropping, the dropping big questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, that <laughs> does sound like a try roll to me. So he will go Cat. through and he will... I'm sure that uh, James will already have told you that what he's claimed to be ancient artifacts are pretty clearly I've, of recent yeah, I've already, yeah I've already said that before we entered the show yeah, yeah but I'm still gonna listen mm -hmm. uh and he he's not it's not like blatant lies but he's definitely implying that these are more valuable and rare than he's yeah than he's letting on alright and you said charm that is correct. Yeah, so um, he is going to be very convinced that you're interested in uh, in Egypt and Egyptian artifacts and possibly going to be an extremely lucrative customer. I mean, to be fair, she is fascinated with Egypt, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> yeah, but you've actually like really convinced him of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, is there anything here that looks particularly... Well, let's see. What's the best way to phrase this? You know what? She's just going to go to when we are actually looking at lamps, because she is eventually going to decide 
she she is more fascinated by the lamps themselves than by many of the artifacts which seem much too important to the area to uh take anywhere but a museum obviously oh yes of course we have very strict controls on what artifacts can actually leave the country but i can assure you that none of these will will uh will get you in any legal trouble Oh, I'm not worried about legal trouble. I'm I'm more concerned about the value this obviously has for your history as a people. It, it seems wrong to take something like that from you folks. But surely a couple of lamps wouldn't be what wouldn't be too bad. Both of you make a psychology roll when she says that. Oh, okay. Well, you're outside, so not you. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Ooh, James. James Ooh. is good at this. <laughs> when she says that, My game. that it's much too important to take these historical artifacts out of the country, he, like, for just a moment, he looks guilty. Ooh. Ooh. Now you, uh, Bertie, unfortunately did not notice that. But if you want to jump into the conversation, you can possibly leverage that somehow. What do you think, James? Do you think you, do, do you think you want to talk, <laughs> or would you rather I keep talking? <laughs> he is. I will point out, he is at this point pretty darn buttered up. And okay. uh, you've managed to get, you know, to notice a weak point. So oh, if you yeah. want to introduce riskier things, this would be the time. Mm -hmm. mm. See, this was the point where I was going to say, uh, as she's pointing out the lamps, uh, I've heard that th these have a little bit more danger regarding starting fires at all well yes of course there's some danger in having uh, an oil lamp in your house if you can afford to have your house wired it's I understand that it's much safer but not many people here can afford that and we have used oil lamps for many centuries so every so often a fire is started but if you're cautious it really is very safe. Uh, James, you got an extreme on that. Uh, there is no, there's like, there's no hesitation here. He doesn't seem to have any sort of aversion to oil lamps. Mm. Okay. Uh, right. And if you are taking them back to your home country, I assume that you do have electricity? We do at home, yes, although it's nice to just read by firelight on occasion, and it's good for those cold winter nights. I'm from a little further north, you see. Well, it's true, but also if you are in a house that has electricity and you don't really need it, perfectly safe to just have this on your mantelpiece or on display as a piece of uh, Egyptian pottery. A bit of the... I've, I have sold many of these to tourists as a taste of the exotic. Well, I prefer things with a little bit of story to them, if that's alright. Do, do you have anything with any kind of... Um... Oh, I don't know. Uh, some, something like, um, oh, this is foolish of me, but uh, the uh, Thousand and One Nights, a any, anything that might call to mind those sorts of tales. Well, I if, I've... if not a lamp... Because, of course, lamps, a lamp figure is pretty 
heavily in one of those stories. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, so you've been like, looking around the shop for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that the two of you have noticed that is actually that actually looks like it's worth a lot of money is actually the jeweled scimitar that he pulled out and threatened Connor with yesterday. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, um, you've you've fully charmed him, and mm -hmm. uh, the honest truth is that's not something that he uh, that he like threatens people with all the time. So yeah, he's gonna take you over, and he will show you uh, if you would need. Um, you would need to let the authorities know that you're bringing this through with you, but this is a fairly old scimitar uh, of both historical and monetary value. Uh, you can see how beautifully it's decorated. Oh, it's lovely. And if you're looking for something to remind you of adventure and the Eastern Nights, this, it is hard to go wrong with a scimitar. Might I ask who the previous owners were? Unless this has been in your family for some time. <laughs> uh... At this point, he is going to give a story that, uh, James, you are going to immediately recognize as nonsense about a particular <laughs> hero who is betrayed by his vizier. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. And how this was, uh, this, this sword was promised to, uh, it was promised to protect the pharaoh, but it failed in his time of need. And ever since then, there's been talk of because curses are all the rage. There's been a talk that yep. perhaps this sword is actually cursed. But of course you wouldn't believe in any any such silly superstition. Okay. You know what? I think I will take this one, actually. And, um... This lamp over here. This one's charming. And she's just gonna pick out one of the smaller, plainer ones. Okay. <laughs> and uh, as they are checking out, she is going to break the terrible news to him of... Uh... Now, I must confess, while I am genuinely fascinated by all these artifacts, I do have a little bit of an ulterior motive in coming to this shop in particular. <clears throat> How else may I help? Please forgive me if this is a terribly sore spot, but I was told this is actually not your first shop location. Oh, no, uh, I, I have had, uh, I had an unfortunate incident at my previous location. I uh, was told. And you must forgive me, I am actually a genuine believer in superstition and some folks who i don't know whether they were being truly unkind said that there was a bit of the supernatural around that incident um, just being as gentle and tactful as possible about yeah, it yeah, yeah. <sighs> that um that is what some people believe. Uh, James, you're going to recognize that, yeah, some people includes him. Mm. <laughs> uh, the police investigated it fully and determined that that it was not supernatural, that I... Oh, oh, I must have left a lamp burning. Well, if you might forgive my saying so, 
The police don't always recognize their noses in front of their faces. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> this is the sort of story that you um, that you find interesting. I find that I can learn a lot more about a people by hearing their lived stories and what they believe than anything else. And, um, I promise you I'm not trying to treat you as a spectacle. This is out of genuine care for another person and as somebody who has also seen some very frightening things in the recent past. Well, this is, he's actually, yeah, at this point he's going to lean in closer to the two of you and say, this is dangerous to speak of openly. Would you be willing to meet me at the Al Hussein Mosque this evening? Absolutely. I have a guide who can take us there. What time would you prefer? Um... I usually close up shop around uh, four in the afternoon, and I like to stop and get a, a bit of tea. Would would about six o'clock? Would you be available around then? Gladly. Thank you so much. Is the, is there anything I can do for you before we? return these lovely items to our hotel. Oh, no, ma'am, this is... You have... This is an excellent... This is a wonderful sale. This is going to bring me some much-needed um, security. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I appreciate your time much more than anything else you have given this this uh, fine morning. Thank you so much. And she's going to take his hands and kiss him on each cheek in the British fashion. <laughs> we will um, see you this evening. Yeah, he he shrinks a bit as you go to, che to kiss his uh, extremely s scarred left half of his face. Um... In fact, this is going to be the first time you've actually seen it, because he's been very careful to keep it totally mm -hmm. away from you. Um, so, it... Like, it is a terrible scar. He is, like... Mm -hmm. You can tell that the left side of his body was very badly burned in the fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he's... He's mollified enough that when you do this, he's not going to get upset, but it's clear that he is not used to being touched and does not actually... <laughs> Enjoy having that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But uh, he has agreed to meet you this evening and to, uh, talk further. A victory. Nice. When we do leave, uh, I am going to mention that stuff. All right. The things you observed? Mm hmm. I didn't Thank feel you. or find a, uh, a moment that I wanted to kind of like butt in. That's fair. Fair enough. Maybe this evening uh, we'll have the opportunity to speak a little bit more to him. Absolutely. Uh, do you intend to do anything else throughout the day? Uh, what time is it when we leave? It's probably 9 or 10. Probably closer to 10 in the morning. Think life doesn't start too early here. I think I'm going to go to the museum. Okay. Uh, can I assume that everybody's sticking together today, or Bertie, do you have something else to do? No, I was actually going to go with him to the museum, and I'm assuming Connor's <laughs> going to follow along when yeah. he gets back. Connor will be bored, uh, but I'm sure he'll go with you. Well, he'll be really interested in the 
fact that I have the scimitar that chased him out of the shop. <laughs> oh, are you going to carry that with you to the museum? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm going to have it wrapped and I'm going to take it to the museum and see if I can figure out literally anything about it. Okay. Like I highly doubt that it's actually an ancient artifact, but it's obviously important and expensive. Yeah. Um so again, this is a jeweled scimitar. I think I'm going to I think probably it's going to cost about 200 bucks. Okay. Uh, which I think is going to be over your your daily spending limit, correct? Uh, spending level is 50, cash is 300. Okay, so I think we're going to end up needing to reduce your available cash. We Okay. That can be... When, uh, when you've made some progress and you report back to, uh, to your lawyer... And he can wire you some additional funds so you can replenish it. But just for now, uh, just willy nilly spending money like that isn't going to be an, as as easy for you for a while. That's fine. <laughs> how how much are we reducing my? Uh... Uh, how how? Are... I don't recall if that affects your daily spending limit or not. Okay. I will look that up later. It's not going to be vitally important for a while. I think. Okay, because I still have my assets set, uh, like, noted as minus 5,000 for those books yeah. that we got, so. You are, you are putting that money to work. Yes, I am. I'm a rich girl. I'm going to spend that money. <laughs> I'm going to use it. So, uh, James. Yes. Uh, the other day you did impress Dr. Kafour with your with your uh, skills and demonstrate that you are really uh, an ancient Egyptian scholar. Yep. Uh, so when you show back up at the museum, he will, he has some appointments going in the morning, but he tells you that uh, by around 11 o'clock, he'll, he'll be able to meet with you again. All right. Uh, you can look around the museum until then. And then he will welcome you into his office. Uh, your friends can come along if they choose to. Are you guys going to come along? I mean, I do still want to talk to somebody about what this scimitar is all about. Yeah. <laughs> so no worries. Everybody can crowd into the office. Um, it's it's nice. It's not. It's not. Uh, he's clearly not incredibly rich or anything, but the museum is pretty darn well found uh, funded. Mm-hmm. And he will. Welcome you back. He'll say, James, it's wonderful to see you again. How uh, how can I help you? What other questions do you have? Uh, if I remember correctly, we didn't... Did we get to talk more about... Um, my family? I, I remember, the, like, afterwards... Uh, after I did really good on translating and all that. Yeah, he can tell you... We talked for a little bit, and then left. I thought there was more that we were going to talk about. So, uh, he used to know... Uh, you can, you can ask him about that, and he will tell you that um, Sir Penhu, Sir Aubrey Penhu, had obviously come to Cairo quite a few times, and they had had long discussions. Um, but... The last time that he was here, which was obviously the time that he came with your family, yeah, he did not. Uh, he didn't come to visit the museum at all. Doctor Kafour will tell you that he hmm. did make an attempt himself to go visit the dig, where uh, where Penhu was digging, uh, but he was rudely rebuffed. He says, uh, "There were." It was rather strange. He was withdrawn and aloof and seemed malicious, but uh, he also s physically he seemed younger. Like he was reinvigorated somehow. I could not begin to hmm. explain it. But um, 
I do you know what the purpose of their of their particular expedition was? I'll share like the few a little bit of the knowledge that I've gathered along the way. Yeah, in point of fact, you actually don't. Like the newspapers didn't like it's just hey, rich guy leading archaeological expedition. A lot of rich guys did that at this time period. And, uh, I'll just yeah. I'll mainly go and say I was hoping uh, you would have more information on that. Well, as I say, they didn't come to consult with me, but I have suspicions. I have my own theories. Uh, you see, one of the things that Sir Penhu and I discussed in great in great detail during his previous visits were the legends of... Have you heard the story of the Black Pharaoh? I have. Just all of us instantly just... Oh, great. <laughs> Suddenly you care about ancient Egypt. <clears throat> <clears throat> he says, I... There's nothing in the papers about it, uh, and obviously I don't have first-hand knowledge, but I... My theory is that they discovered some secret connected to it. And that is why Sir Penhu wanted me away from the site. He knows that I know much about the subject, and I think he was afraid that if I put the pieces together, he might not um, he might not have sold credit for the discovery. I have a different theory. All right. On that. From the little bit of knowledge I do have about the Black Pharaoh, I think he was not so much trying to keep you from learning more about the Black Pharaoh, but trying to protect you. Hmm. So far, we ran into back in London, a cult that worships the Black Pharaoh. In London, you said? Which, in, yes. How very strange. And I assume it had some connection to Sir Penhu. It did. Unfortunately, now that uh, connection no longer exists. Yes. Well, uh, as Sir Aubrey doesn't exist, I imagine it wouldn't. Uh, all of your, your friends, too. Um, what do you actually know of the Black Pharaoh legend? Uh, there's a few things I could go and mention. I think I'll mention the general p knowledge that London had for it through the for newspaper uh, and my first-hand experience from the cult and what they like to share with me about. Okay. About it. But I won't go into, like, what happened to me exactly just a bit of the experience all right uh, uh so you want to try to withhold the the supernatural stuff that you went through yeah would you please make a fast talk roll oh no <laughs> uh, please be low You know hey, what I'm that's spending. Pretty low. Uh, just a second. Based on his love of psychology, you're going to need to have a hard success in order to uh, to keep him from uh, fifteen lux. Anything. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he will get the impression that you met a strange group of people who had weird beliefs but not that anything supernatural happened to you 
Mm hmm. Say, so, that's. Yes, you, you have some of the basics there. Uh, how much do all of you mind a history lesson? I'd always gladly take a history lesson. You might want to get out your notebooks here. Oh. That's both the keeper and Dr. Go on. Four. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Birdie will not get out a notebook, but will uh, pass Connor a, a small flask. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a pull out a notebook out of my jacket. All right. Uh, so he'll tell you at the end of the third dynasty, there's a story that a man known as Nefren Ka came to Egypt. A sorcerer who they said could bring madness and death to his enemies with the flick of a finger. Uh, he came from an ancient city in the deserts of Arabia named uh, Irem, the city of pillars. Uh, do you know the uh, Do you know the book, the Al Azif? This is another name for the Necronomicon. Uh, oh my! I'll say, it, I'll say it, I think it sounds familiar. Yes, this city is also mentioned in that tome, and uh, it, it it seems to have been spoken of with dread. Uh, Nefren Ka. The sorcerer revived the worship of an old, foul god known as the Black Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He and that god, over time, became interchangeable in the minds of the people. And so the priest and the god were both known as the Black Pharaoh. And it is difficult now, looking at the legends and records, to tell what should be attributed to the god and was a pre-existing legend and what was done by the sorcerer. Uh, for many years the Black Pharaoh fought with uh, the successors of the Third Dynasty for control of the land. And mm. he, as the, uh, the person he the, the people he was struggling with were the descendants of uh, Zoser but uh, as the records go he was so powerful that there is now no record of his enemies he ruled the <laughs> Nile and its people for many years at last Sneferu rose and founded the fourth dynasty and with the aid of the goddess Isis he thwarted the evil magic and was able to slay Nefren Ka uh, now, this is a bit strange. The Sneferu commanded that a t uh, pyramid should be raised to house the body of the sorcerer. He was interesting. Yes, they actually performed the burial rites on his enemy. Uh, which may have been done less out of uh, out of obligation and respect and more to shield in Egypt from the magic that was still contained within the corpse. Uh, however, the pyramid that they were that they were constructing for the sorcerer was it collapsed during construction and another that was already halfway through completion was quickly converted for the purpose. Uh, you know, of course, of the Bent Pyramid. I will shake my head saying, I've, I've heard of it. Yes, this is, this is why it is somewhat misshapen. Supposedly, the, the, um, the original design for the pyramid at Medom would have been according to the final angles of the pyramid. And they had to repurpose it, which is why I believe that there might have been um, some sort of magical protection at work here. Uh, 
Of course, the pyramid itself has been pretty thoroughly uh, researched, and we have found no trace of, uh, of hidden chambers or any sort of secrets. There's also a, another pyramid. Uh, the Red Pyramid is also attributed to Sneferu and is said to guard, uh, to guard the land in case Nefranka should rise from the dead. Uh, Sneferu had all traces of the Black Pharaoh stricken from the land, uh, and the worshippers of, uh, of Nefren Ka were eventually driven south out of Egypt. Uh, I, with that information, I'm going to be underlining it very heavily. Yeah. Uh, there is also some suggestion that Queen N Nitocris in the 6th dynasty was in league with a new cult of the Black Pharaoh, but the, the evidence for this is pretty subjective. I believe it to be true. Um, my, my opinions are not in the majority. The, uh... The... And the other... Well... Of course, the other name of the uh, of the god, there. You distinguish a little bit if you can. It's difficult at this time. There's the Black Pharaoh is both Nefren Ka and the god he worshipped, who's also known as Nelathotep. We know that name. <laughs> you do? Do you say that? <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely not. Okay. Although, uh, I cannot guarantee that Birdie wouldn't go just a little bit queasy looking. <laughs> now, there are other bits and pieces to the legend. Um, he was, Nefren Ka was said to possess a huge beast of which the, uh, the Sphinx at Giza is a small representation. Uh, his voice mm -hmm. was said to be carried across the land upon a black wind, which was able to destroy at his whim. Um, supposedly, there are men-like but not human worshippers of the Black Pharaoh underground in the deserts. And uh, there is a prophecy that the Black Pharaoh will arise fingers and toes after the Great Good One. Uh, Who, pray tell, is the Great Good One? Well, that is interesting, isn't it? There is uh, one interpretation, which uh, take it or leave it, is that it could be 20 centuries after Jesus. And at that point, a new age would begin to end the dominance of mankind and bring freedom and stark truth to the Black Pharaoh's followers. And you said humanoid, but not human. Yes. Uh, Men-like, but inhuman. All right. There's uh, the the Black Fairy was of course just a part of a pantheon of gods. Uh, the uh, I personally, from from my research, I believe they should they are known as the Outer Gods, led by the demon Sultan Azathoth. Completely separate from the uh, mostly familiar pantheon that, of course, my ancestors worshipped. Hmm. Still be writing all this stuff down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I personally believe that this that this cult still exists. You're telling me that there are some adherents in um, in London. 
I myself have seen them in evidence of them in the desert. And I've heard of a cult in Kenya that I, worships a god I believe is a, another aspect of the Black Pharaoh. The, uh, the cult of the bloody tongue. Uh, names we are familiar with. Oh, really? Ber Birdie just leans back and pinches her nose. <laughs> so they're in New York, too. Oh, my. So this is not... This is not a single... Um, a single instance that you've run into them. No, it is not. Sadly, it is not. We have encountered them a number of times. It has always been deeply unpleasant. Yes, I imagine. As you uh, recall from the last time I was here, I told you about Hammer. Yes, of course. Well, oh. when in London, it was... Oh. I believe I'm making it was the connection. Yes. It was the bloody ton that got to him. Oh my. You can see that he's considering something for a moment. Have you, in your run-ins with these cults, have you seen anything that you would be unable to explain in a rational sense? Oh. Connor, may I have that flask back? <laughs> yeah, Connor. Connor looks at it and hands it to you. Like, and know. she just takes a nice long swig. <laughs> I'll just Ooh. hear that happening in the back and just uh, lean forward and say, unfortunately, many times. So have I. I have seen enough to convince me that um, Nefren Ka and the god he worshipped are very real. I have seen creatures, servitors of the god in the desert. Are you aware that the Carlisle expedition was not the final expedition to be sponsored by the Pinehua Foundation. I would not be surprised. There have been more in the absence of Sir Aubrey. Um, there is, in fact, one digging right now. They were recently at Giza, uh, where... They recovered a mummy that was subsequently stolen from them. Which I believe it was not identified positively, but based on my own research, I believe it may be the mummy of Queen Na Queen Natakris herself. Who was buried alive. Oh, I will also be writing this down. Yeah. I don't know how she was stolen, I don't know who did it, but I can't help thinking that the theft is related to the prophecy about the return of the Black Pharaoh. Frankly, given what we've seen in the past few months, I wouldn't be surprised if she walked away of her own accord. I would be, but I wouldn't rule it out. One, one member of the expedition uh, was recently let go. A Dutch archaeologist named... Uh, now, I'm going to be trying to pronounce a Dutch name here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to guess it is Jan Willem van Heuvelen. And I can actually write it out here.
Well, one of us actually kind of speaks German. Well, this is Dutch. I was about to say, that's... I was they're, about they're to say, what's the similar. difference? But I don't want... Uh, <laughs> but I don't want hate mail. So... This is a Dutch archaeologist who was let go by the dig supervisor, uh, Dr. Henry Clive. So if you... If you would like to learn more information about what the Penhu Foundation is currently sponsoring, he might be your best source. If he's still alive. Right She's just going to uh, say that under her breath. <laughs> I will... I'll ask if... Uh, you know what part of the... Like, where he'd be, like, located, at least. Hmm. If you have that knowledge. I'm afraid I really... I really don't at the moment, but I can make inquiries. Uh, he is... Uh -huh. The man is troubled. I believe he was let go from the expedition for cause. But uh, he is, despite despite his difficulties, he is actually a competent archaeologist. So uh, he has connections among my colleagues, and most likely I can I can get some information for you. That would be uh, be very much appreciated. Now, we have been speaking about very dark matters for some time. <laughs> Uh, my my personal <laughs> beliefs in the more esoteric and occult aspects of our of our study are not they're not unknown, but they are not popular. So I would appreciate if you don't spread my name around too much. As it may make it I, difficult for me to retain my uh, my position. Of course, I most likely won't even say a word about it. We won't be saying a word to anyone but ourselves about it for safety, in addition to anything else. Safety is a very real concern here, <laughs> not not just from the cult either. Um, it sounds as though you are better positioned than I am to confront, perhaps not directly, but to make investigations here. Uh, but I want to make it clearer that I believe it's, it's very possible that something very bad could happen soon. And if I can in any way assist in preventing it, I'm at your service. She's going to give him the flask. <laughs> <laughs> Just lean forward, give him the flask. I No, I, I cannot. He is, uh, despite his, um, despite his beliefs, he's also devout Muslim. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. So he's not insulted. Suit he gets yourself. what you're trying to do, but he does not protect. <laughs> Suit yourself. Maybe that's what I should try to make if we make it out of this. Maybe I should try to make something with good kick that uh, folks who don't partake can partake in. Uh, have you had coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible stuff. <laughs> uh, have you had? Say, uh... Have you had Arabian coffee? I have not. Is it different? You should try something. <laughs> James will just say yes. Yes, it is. He will give you the name of his favorite shop. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh... Yeah, Connor's on board. He, he heard. <laughs> I, I, I feel like James at least had it once. Yeah, yeah. almost certainly, yeah. Uh... And we'll say with confidence, yes, it is very much different. <laughs> Fair 
enough. Is there... I will, as I said, look into uh, Van Hoyland's current whereabouts. Is there anything else I can assist you with at the moment? At the moment? I don't think so. Try to stay sane. Oh, hold on. And I will flip to a different page right down where uh, we're at and just rip it off and just say, you might want to keep this on you. Oh, thank you very much. I. It's good to be able to contact each other. It does help. And as to your comment about staying safe, uh, what is your last name? Ms. Brandt. I find that my faith assists me. Faith is good for that. Now, we are ten minutes from our <laughs> usual quitting time. Yeah. Do you want to go to your appointment with uh, Faraz Najjar, or do you want to call it for the evening, or do you have anything else in mind? I feel we should probably call it for the evening. Okay. Probably call it. My, my, my uh, brain is starting to get a little bit fried. Oh, <laughs> was it a shock to suddenly get some answers out of nowhere? Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a shock to get some answers out of nowhere, and also, you know, the stress of somebody who believes this stuff, no idea if they are also, you know, gonna be in on it. Uh-huh. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh-huh. I want to <laughs> I'm going to go with that he probably isn't. I dearly hope he isn't. If he is, that's going to suck because he's uh right now my only solid connection. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and if he's not, try not to get him killed. Yeah. I mean, we always try. <laughs> Connor, I'm afraid you did not get to do much this episode. Uh, yeah, I, I was expecting it because, you know, I did a lot of talking and we're now dealing with, you know, talking with respectable people and not, you know, shady business people. <laughs> Uh, also my luck lately so i get it <laughs> <laughs> i get It'll it It'll only get better yeah it's fine i've just been more and it's what yeah. happened to me on <laughs> does, yeah, connor, gotta get the does connor yeah. have any questions though uh so far connor's just been absorbing uh information and nodding along but like a lot of it, he's just like, yeah, yeah, I, I could have figured that out. Yeah, I get that. Okay. And yeah, whenever whenever uh, the guy started answering questions and being like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like in showing that he's informed. Connor is also suspicious of this man. Just a yep. little bit, like you know too much. You're too friendly. I don't trust this. Completely yep. fair. <laughs> no, I. I... I feel like he's in the same boat as us. It's just that we have a little bit more uh, survivability than him. Uh, he is. We um, are not going to regale him with tales of fat sucking vampires and <laughs> worms and. Yeah, like 100%. I am not going to. Or, talk you know, to him the. About... Uh, the Basically, the dragon that we found. Yeah. Like, I the dragon, am, the well full the well. of faces. He is uh, he is not ancient, but he is clearly in his sixties and very much looks like a scholar. So uh, yeah, he I mean, knows things. Fisticuffs are probably not his cup of tea. No.
if Birdie yeah. survives this, she's going to open up an adventurer's school specifically for <laughs> shooting skills. <laughs> That's what you call it when the FBI comes knocking, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, this is for adventurers, not mobsters. Yep. You... Yeah, why would, we, why would we go just for mobsters? They don't pay. <laughs> well, they do, but they expect favors, and once you get to be friends with them, they start expecting things of you, and it's just, it's a whole thing. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Anything thank you. That was fun. Anything to say before we say goodnight? Uh, I have a joke. Nothing that won't get us in deep political trouble. So. <laughs> I, I, I have a joke, joke if, you, if you guys want to hear it. Do your joke. <laughs> what is black and white and red all over? <laughs> Oh no. Is it a newspaper? The... Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a trick answer on yeah, that one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to I didn't mean to actually answer it. No, it's all good. I got a lot of my coworkers at <laughs> They they were so confused. They're like red all over. What do you mean by the the thing in the color I'm, red? It's... It's a it's a news it's a newspaper, but I was expecting a trick answer there. Well, I mean, oh. I guess nobody reads a newspaper anymore, so yeah. Oh, you know what's black and white and red all over? Is the thing that was once referred to as Twitter, but is now called X. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you if you look at it in dark mode, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's black Wait, there's and a, white. There, there's another way to look at things instead of uh, that's not dark mode. Oh, we're getting controversial now. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's there. a way to look at things. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I, I can I can go and filter it blue. <laughs> I actually I actually know several people who cannot use dark mode because it hurts their eyes worse than light mode does. <laughs> Mm. Are they okay? No. 